zoop. Today, I'm going to show you how to terminate this flat Ethernet wire cable. Why would you use a flat Ethernet cable? Well, here's a size comparison for you, okay? This is a standard Ethernet cable right here, Cat5E. It is much, much thicker, circular, and it's very hard to hide the cable. Even if this is white, it's very, very difficult to hide this anywhere. This is why I use flat Ethernet cable to hide at some locations. For example, here in this nail salon, we use flat Ethernet cable to install PoE IP cameras. Can you see the wires? All right, let's zoom in a little bit. How about now? Can you see it? It's very difficult to see. You have to be looking for it to know it's there. Personally, myself, I use flat Ethernet cable for powering up low voltage device as well. For example, previously for these roller shade, we used this flat Ethernet cable to power up the whole thing. Pretty slick, right? I mean, you can still see it, obviously, in this video, in this project, but I can hide it if I really, really want to. But for now, it looks okay. All right, let's terminate this cable right here. It's very short, just for demonstration purposes. You need an X-Acto knife about 1.5 inches away. Score a line. Don't cut through it. On the other side. This protective jacket cover is extremely uh, hard to cut through. So there's no way you can just yank it out like that. It's just impossible. Even using this special wire stripper, there's no way I can yank that jacket apart. See, it just slides right out. Once you're able to use the X-Acto knife, you'll be able to see some crack in the jackets. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there it is. So that's a good start. On this side, the crack is even more pronounced. You might need the pliers to pull it out, as you saw earlier. By the way, don't throw away this piece yet. Save it for later, and you'll see later on why. We're going to use a standard Cat5 terminating block. This one has the loading bar, as you can see. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but on the bottom side, it's flat, and on the top side, right here, it's sticking out. You want that sticking out part to be on top, okay? Save it for later. For now, we need to do the order. So we're going to use the B order, which is white-orange first, then orange, White, green, blue, white, blue, back to green. This can be very tricky, so I'm going to use the loader bar first and do it one at a time. Here we go. White, orange. By the way, the process I'm showing right now can be done using one of those special flat Ethernet kit cable, but I find those are very expensive. So using this method that works with any regular round Ethernet cable will suffice. And this kit right here is much, much cheaper. Orange. Despite what marketing says about these flat Ethernet cable, there is no way that is much, much faster than round Ethernet cable. This is just pure physics in the sense that it has to be round just 
for them to be twisted together to cancel out each other's magnetic interferences. So if you truly want performance, stick to round regular Ethernet cable. If you want it to look nice and pretty, then use flat Ethernet cable if you have to. White green. Blue. White blue. Back to green. White brown. Finally, brown. I love using this loading bar right here. Because at the last moments, you can always double check the order. So here we go. This is white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and then back to solid brown. Perfect. The order is correct. Terminate whatever access you have there. Don't forget to hold on to the loading bar, of course. Now grab the other piece of the uh, block, I guess you could say. So with the part that's sticking out, make sure it's staying up. And for this block right here, the part that's sticking out, make sure that it's on the bottom. Insert it as you normally would. But you can see right here, there's a lot of excess. That's why we save the other piece. Fold it in half, and then jam it straight in. Verify one more time that all of the connections are hitting all the way to the end. And then use the crimper to terminate it as you normally would. There we go. It doesn't look pretty at the end, and it's okay if you want to make it nice and pretty. But for now, for demonstration purposes, I think it's fine. You can pull it out if you want, but it's not going anywhere. Now you have one perfectly working flat Ethernet cable ready to go. If you want, you can use one of this uh, Fluke network meter to verify that everything is working perfectly fine. This is one of my favorite fluke, by the way. I use it everywhere I go. Flip it to this position. I don't know what you would call it. On this side, flip it to the cable map. Push it in on one side. On the other side, push it in as well. Mine has been defective because I've used it for like over 10 years already. So that's why it's not uh, illuminating. I have to press it down physically. I don't know if you can see it or not, but all eight wires are connected and working perfectly fine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If the cable is not working, then you'll see a jump. A jump means that the cable is not uh, connected or in, not in the right order. So yeah, this cable is now ready to go for deployment. I have no idea when I would use such a short cable, but you never know. All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to terminate flat Ethernet cable. The same process can be used on a regular cable as well. Everything that I did earlier can be done on the uh, regular round Ethernet cable. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.